Hawaii, we're surrounded by the ocean. Our people saw the ocean as something that connected. Not divide, not blocked, but the ocean connects us. And coming from ancestors who were voyagers, who navigated using the stars, using the winds, using the currents, they saw the value of the ocean in everything that we did. From our food, to creating rain and water, to creating the life that we need to live in this planet. And so we were passed those down in fragments. And it's our job to pass that on to our leaders and for them to pass it on to the many children that they reach and they teach throughout the year and throughout their life. simplest way to put it is that the ocean really saved my life. Um, it kind of makes me emotional because what I was able to do in the ocean was create space around me, a safe space around me where I could detach myself from the chaos in my life and be in a place that didn't they didn't do anything but love me and wrap me with support. When I'm in the ocean, I feel relieved, I guess. It's like um, a place of calm. Like some people, who, like the church is their calm place or like where they let everything out. So the ocean is like my church in a way. So when we go in the ocean, it's like just positive energy. We're all like happy and having fun. Even swimming, it's just like re refreshing. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you get out of the water, you, you're done surfing, you go take a shower, you feel like a million dollars. You feel like you've been cleansed. And that, that's what the salt water do. The salt water is the medicine. People should know that, that the salt water heals, keeps you young. Part of the story we have to tell differently that we are responsible to tell is how the ocean is that connectivity. You know, a lot of people look at the ocean as a boundary. And um, for good reason. I think that's respect that it's a boundary, but it's also a lack of perception. You know, it's a limited perception. I guess we'll start with giving yourselves a round of applause for showing up this morning. This is our ninth year, starting as of um, next month. And it's because of what you guys do, because what you see in this circle right now, showing up at 6 a.m., showing up the day of to be a part of putting our babies in the water and sharing your guys' love and mana'o. And that is, that is really a special, um, gift that you guys are all giving the children that come to celebrate the ocean with us. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Nakamakai is a nonprofit organization that I started in 2008 with some friends. And basically we want to empower youth by connecting them to the land and to the ocean to create a deeper sense of love and responsibility for themselves and the natural environment. And ideally, as our children become adults, become our businessmen, our leaders in politics, our normal citizens, that all of the decisions they're going to make in life is going to be based around that love for the ocean. Anybody know what the Hawaiian word for canoe? Ah! Oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, oh.
Kamakai li literally means children of the ocean. And in so many ways, we are all the, that children of the ocean, whether we surf or not. We have salt water in our blood, in our bodies. And, and the part of that naming is to be inclusive, to include everyone, as well as using a Hawaiian name was important to show origin, but then the inclusion is that so many other cultures in the world embrace the ocean as well. You know, so we, we all have this connectivity and the one thing that connects us is the ocean. It's not a divider, right? It actually connects us to everyone and every culture in the world. Comecei a competir o circuito mundial com 15 anos de idade, foi em 1997. É, foi no Havaí a minha primeira experiência do tour, foi quando eu conheci o Duane de Soto, né? E desde então a gente se tornou família, né? Como eles chamam no Havaí, Ohana, né? E todos os anos que eu tô no Havaí, eu sou voluntário do projeto dele, participo já desde o início do projeto. O Duane explicou para mim que a ideia dele era, assim como o Duque conseguiu levar o surf para o mundo, uma cultura polinésia, ele gostaria muito de poder levar essa cultura que ele estava criando através do Nakamakai para o resto do mundo também. E pela primeira vez, ele está saindo do Havaí e vindo para o Brasil. So we just uh, got to Rio de Janeiro. Uh, total of over 20 hours in flying and a good about 12 hours plus in layovers. So we're just happy to be here, all in one piece, everybody together, and looking forward to getting the bujos. Eu me sinto um privilegiado de poder representar essa união cultural entre Havaí e Brasil. E está sendo um prazer receber ele junto com mais 17 crianças havaianas que já fazem parte desse projeto aqui no Rio de Janeiro. Pretty normal. Uh, boys will be boys. We uh, just let them play. You know, they, they can figure it all out. And I think with playing, uh, you can learn way more than sitting down at a desk, learning lessons. And then there, there's this. Once they once they can't handle, the crying starts coming. So <laughs> that's part of learning. <laughs> this is your house. Yeah. Whoa. See the trophy there? Where'd you get that one from? This guy here, do you know who he is? Oh, no, no. Yes, is that you? Dwayne. Oh, that's Uncle Dwayne? Yeah. That's... That's the Oxbow Contest in France. Whoa. He was the, the, I would say, the poster of the event. Mm. Well, uh, you have a lot of boards. He has one small little boogie board. Yeah. Damon's gonna want to use that. Yeah. So thanks for showing us this, Uncle Phil. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, how are you, bro? Thanks for meeting us today. Hey, what's up? Good, good. Well, it's a little stormy, a little, a little unruly, but it looks like this inside air would be fun to catch a couple small ones. Get everybody standing up and just having fun, you know? We're here in Brazil, so we gotta embrace everything we got. Jefferson is from this area, here in Sacorema. He's gonna be sharing his boards with us and uh, joining us today. So say aloha to him, just give him your love. As similaridades entre o Brasil e o Havaí, eu acho que é a questão da, da temperatura, né? A gente está à mesma distância da linha do Equador para o sul que eles estão para o norte, então a vegetação é similar, 
a questão das chuvas também é muito similar. A gente também tem essa cultura muito forte é, com o mar. Então, acho que essa é a nossa principal ligação aí, seria o oceano. students and our babies outside of our homelands. We give them the opportunity to learn and grow and connect with many different cultures. They get to become more understanding of the world, more respectful of our other people. So it's such a valuable piece of their foundation. Connectivity. They've touched the sand, they've seen the different ocean, because the oceans are different on each side, different winds, and experience a new country, a new culture, and be hosted by people who are have been endless in giving, endless in love and aloha. That's why I'm here right now, you know, is that opportunity to expose the people that have supported the Kamakai to that kind of love that can come from our foreign friends. Obrigado for coming to here today to celebrate the children of Bujos and the children of Rio de Janeiro. What we're doing today as a group, as a as a family, Ohana, is we're gonna we're gonna work with the children of your communities. Because what we wanna do is give the children in your communities the thoughts and the feelings that we have about the ocean. We all have a passion for the ocean, and we all have a passion for the environment, and that's what we're going to be instilling in our babies. When we're finished with our work today, the children are going to have a relationship with the ocean that's going to last a lifetime. Uh, thank you all for coming and sharing your time and sharing your passion with the children. responsabilidade envolvida, né, que é a palavra-chave do, do Nakamakai, é, a gente precisou separar as crianças em grupos, são 60 crianças, foram divididas em cinco grupos de 12, esses grupos passavam por cinco estações, cada estação com um tipo de informação diferente. Numa primeira tenda ela vai ter sobre consciência ambiental, numa outra tenda lá no Havaí eles aprendem sobre a rouculeia, né, que é, aquele espaço, é a navegação deles, numa outra tenda eles aprendem sobre os animais marítimos e no final eles dão uma volta de canoa e uma volta de stand-up com os voluntários. Então assim, é um projeto que a criança ela é realmente conectada à cultura do oceano, ela passa por todos os aspectos né, de tudo que ela precisa aprender do mar.
teach your kids about ocean safety and what it needs to take to take care of everybody on the beach. And I'm a mini mentor. Mini mentor is a junior alakai. I'm training to be an alakai. But these two are specifically um, different because the lifeguards are telling me don't. A gente tem essa responsabilidade de, se a gente está fazendo algo para que a criança se sinta em casa dentro do mar, elas precisam ter uma experiência boa, positiva, saudável e sair da água querendo voltar para a água. Por isso a gente trouxe os salva-vidas, é, ensinou um pouquinho para elas sobre a importância de você observar o mar, observar o oceano antes de entrar na água, é onde estão as correntes e aí você vai ter uma uma Experiência sempre divertida e saudável dentro da água. Basically, planting children in the ocean or putting them into the ocean environment, we create a relationship, you know, where they become connected with the ocean, not uh, as a sort of like a once in a while thing, but they'll always have it in their hearts as one of their close kind of friends. And giving, giving that connectivity to our nature and giving that connectivity to, to the earth, to the ocean, it, it is a practice that is not do, being done because they're like taught in school, but it's more that it's a part of who they are and a part of their actual culture. Quando os havaianos falaram que vinham para o Brasil, eles pediram muito que eles queriam ter um intercâmbio cultural, que eles queriam conhecer a nossa cultura. Então daí veio a ideia de realmente procurar as nossas raízes. Então a gente entrou em contato com os índios, né, Guarani, Funiô, a gente entrou em contato com os quilombos. E acho que quando a gente convive com um povo que valoriza a sua história, também faz a gente querer valorizar a nossa essência. slave tribe and hearing their story and when I don't remember auntie's name but she did her dance she she has a wailing a, a yell and her wailing is a wailing that we have at home and it's an expression of the struggle the pain that comes from their ancestors and I cried like right off the bat in the middle of the ceremony when she did her first wailing It was just like, it just went right through me like a knife, you know? And I was like, I was totally captivated by it. And then also 
to connect with the Indians from the north of Amazon and see them and them carrying their language, um, carrying their craft, carrying their songs, and then even being willing to share it with us. That was a game changer for me. That was something very different for me coming here again to Brazil. Quando os índios trouxeram os rituais, o artesanato deles, eu senti nos havaianos aquele olhar de, nossa, a gente também tem um artesanato parecido com esse, né? Quando os índios foram dançar, foram falar a língua deles, eles também, né? A gente também tem a nossa dança, igual eles têm a ula, né? O índio tem a dança nativa, então, assim, todo, todos os povos têm as suas danças tradicionais, né? Os seus cantos tradicionais e quando a gente ouve o do outro, a gente reconhece o nosso. <música> Do Nordeste, o único povo que manteve a língua até hoje, com todo o massacre que teve no Nordeste, foi o Funiô. A língua dele se chama Iatê. Então, o que vocês estão falando aqui é uma língua que há milhares de anos se mantém e eles perpetuam a língua mãe. Não sei como eles fizeram isso, foi mágica, porque os índios que falavam na língua deles tinham a língua arrancada na colonização, porque eles tinham que falar o por... começar a falar o português. Então, assim, é... isso é uma resistência que a gente precisa hoje. It was a very emotional day. Um... And a couple of us were in tears because of how your guys' Amazon is getting burnt, um, which is something very sacred. And burning it just for soy? Like, we have a lot of soy, and we have farms that can produce it already. You don't need to, like, literally burn down, like, one of the best forests in the world, or the biggest one in the world. It's similar to like what's happening at home. Our mountain, or our Mona, Mona Awakea, is getting like, they're adding telescopes on it. Um, they wrote a contract for 14, or 13, and they're trying to make a 14. Like if you go to the Mona Awakea, there's three or 400 people living there. There's about 60 grandparents who are blocking the road, and you're not supposed to live there. There's still natives that are here that like adore or love that place and have aloha for it. But they're just desecrating our land as well as the Amazon. And the people are just desecrating our land. It's all for money. Um, none of it's for respect. It's a, I think it's a wake up call for all of us. A true ringing of the bell, you know? People, it's time to come to dinner and see what's going on here. You know, we cannot continue to disregard our indigenous peoples, their languages, their culture. Mauna Kea. Mauna Kea. We say, Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. Kukia Imauna. You know, to know that there's only 350,000 indigenous peoples left out of what was used to be 10 million in the 1500s, 
to realize that there's 180 languages within that 350,000 people. It's super sad and, and disheartening to know these kind of facts. And then it's super beautiful and, and awesome that they still are gonna maintain their line of persevering and keeping the language. They're not gonna just stop because of the changes that are happening. They're gonna fight for their language. They're gonna continue their culture. We love your rainforest, the Amazon. We love our mountains, like Mount Nakea. We stand for the rights of all Native peoples. E o evento foi assim, surpreendeu a todos. É, foi muito lindo ver como o ritual une qualquer tipo de povo, né? Então chegou, teve um momento ali que a gente teve os índios com os quilombos, com os havaianos. Então assim foi muito emocionante a gente sentir esse lugar onde todo mundo tem algo em comum. Né, que é o lado humano, que é o lado da gente cantar, da gente dançar. E fez todo mundo sair dali pensando nessa, né, tendo essa visão da essência, né, da conexão maior que existe entre todos. Of us are Native Hawaiians. Um, me and a couple other of us, we know our cultural practices, but many people don't. And that's another thing that's dying is not only our language, not only our culture, but our practices, our daily practices, like waking up in the morning and being grateful for something. Waking up in the morning and just being in front of the ocean, getting to go surf good waves. But now it's just pollution. You wake up in the morning, you see pollution. You wake up in the morning, you see more pollution. And it's hard to see it. I, don't, I wasn't here back then. I don't know what it was in the 1950s or in the 1800s or the 1600s when my Ali were alive. But it still like hurts. Like it hurts me as like a child to like think that what if what if I don't even get to live the rest of my life because pollution, because one person throwing a piece of trash on the floor, um, or because us as people aren't taking care of the land. I personally like doing. Um, cleanups. Like yesterday, our cleanup was supposed to be 15 minutes. It was like 45 minutes. <laughs> it was a lot longer. But I think that that was significant. Instead of it just being like a 15 minute there back, we were like stopping, like cleaning it out. And we all try to clean it as much as we can. But it's also our responsibility to not even throw it down in the first place. I mean, a lot of the rhetoric around the plastic movement is, you know, a byproduct of us not thinking generationally. So what we're trying to instill in the alakai is that when they make decisions that they're thinking about the next seven generations, um, they're thinking about what their ancestors did seven generations before them. And they had recognized and understand that they are but a brief moment in time and that their responsibility is to make the world a better place. And we really want our, our babies, our children, to realize that from a very young age so that they can take ownership of it and responsibility to care for this ocean and this planet. Not just Hawaii, but the entire planet. 
and we are all stewards of that. And so we hope that this is passed to them. It was passed to us by our ancestors. We're passing it to them and they will be even better than we were. It's our job. It's our kuleana to do that. Um, we, we as Hawaiians know that it's our job to respect our land, take care of it. And so just one way out of the millions of ways, it's just to say thank you, just to clean up, just to pick up trash, pick up one piece. Because in the end, we are still all one community. Whether it's Brazil, Hawaii, whether it's Greenland, we are still one community. We are all still family in one way or, the, or another. Part of, part of coming on this trip for, for the children that we brought was to come and see Brazil themselves. And it's probably not gonna be a part of them immediately as much as it will be when they get older and reflect back on these times. But that's where I see the biggest impact is on the reflection, is on the, on the going through experiences as they get older and these memories popping up, these times popping up and using them to make decisions as they get older. This whole program, the Alaka'i, Dwayne and the team designed this to give them experiences to become leaders in their family, leaders in their community, leaders for the world. Coming to Brazil helps to set those stones so they become strong, they can build whatever they want on top. The leadership is really a byproduct. The focus is not the leadership, the focus is the ocean and raising um, the next generation of ocean leaders. Um, and through that, through the lessons of the ocean, they become leaders, right? So it's natural for them to want to advocate for the ocean, speak about the ocean. Todos os filhos do Duane e da Malia, eles são criados para serem futuros líderes, né? Então, são crianças extremamente eloquentes, crianças extremamente educadas, com muitos talentos, né? E a Pua, ela é uma menina que ela sempre se destaca assim de a maneira como ela fala, sabe, a opinião dela. Então, ela tem realmente assim uma uma mente que tá lá na frente. Você olha para essa geração e fala: "Meu Deus, né? Que quem serão Essas crianças que já são tão incríveis, com tantos valores, e eu acho que isso eles ensinam para todo mundo. Before we came up, they were like, okay, you guys, are, you guys have to come home different. And a lot of us were just like, how are we going to do that? Like, we're doing the same thing, we're going to teach them how to do it, we're going to meet with some new people from Brazil. But learning about the Brazilian habits, culture, and that ceremony yesterday was, like, really amazing. Um, it opened my eyes. It's, we're bringing a lot, of, a lot of things home just from that one day. É, o fato de serem pessoas de línguas diferentes, de, de culturas diferentes, mas que todo mundo se une pelo um, um mesmo ideal, né? Que é o oceano, que é o meio ambiente, né? Que é o futuro do nosso planeta. Então, conversando com os havaianos, eles estavam falando que existia é, um grupo antes do Brasil, e agora esse grupo está voltando para o Havaí totalmente transformado, como um novo grupo. In my mind, and what I teach my children is that they should be on an infinite learning path. It shouldn't end till the day they die. And I think that that's a message that we have to have as people in general, is to continue receiving and learning. And we don't have to keep it all. We can let some of it go if we don't need it, but we have to have a mindset to be open, otherwise we might miss something very important.